from Pune. This is Adventist World Radio. Hello and welcome to our international English service. In our program today, we have music from Bristol and Esther Cynthia. A health message. Our thought for the day is taken from God's word on the topic, What if Jesus had said no? This is your host, Sharad. And I'm Maureen, and you're listening to Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope. Let's begin our program with a song by Driscoll, Jesus Never Fades. Listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope from Pune, India. And now a health message will be brought to you by Nirmala, a nurse. Dear listeners, today we'll be talking about eating disorders in men. Yes, eating disorders can afflict men too. Eating disorders have often been associated only with women, 
but increasing re- revelations show the prevalence of eating disorders in men too men and boys also have an obsession with a perfect body the only reason it is less identified is because perhaps men do not like to be perceived as suffering from the problems of a woman as such they will not express themselves and succumb to the pressures of society and the demand for a perfect physical appearance in the form of these eating disorders let's take a look at the types of eating disorders they may suffer from their signs in general and the causes of these disorders the first disorder is characterized by continual starving and dieting this is known as anorexia nervosa the fear of weight gain is at its peak which is why the diet is completely restricted another sign of anorexia nervosa is a need to binge vomit or excessively exercise to lose the and maintain weight the psychological basis of this order lies in the need to cope with life they hope to gain some control by following the norms of weight loss and developing what according to them is a perfect body image however they don't realize when to stop as for them no amount of weight loss is satisfactory this further aggravates the disorder and may become life threatening at a later stage in life as a body is going to use up all the reserve supplies of energy and ultimately becomes very weak this order also affects the mental balance which may affect the direction of thought the next disorder is bulimia nervosa those suffering from this condition eat large amounts of food in a short span of time this induces guilt which they deal with by making themselves vomit or use laxatives and diuretics they may even starve themselves in some cases this creates a cycle which continues in the same pattern resulting in weakness of the body those suffering from bulimia nervosa often experience feelings such as disgust poor self esteem and are even victims of depression the most serious concern regarding bulimia is that it is not visible like anorexia and they may remain hidden for a long time until its effects finally start showing they appear confident but are actually seriously disturbed within binge eating disorder not all eating disorders are related to weight loss binge eating refers to someone who binges on high calorie foods to fill the emptiness they feel within similar to those suffering from bulimia however these people do not feel guilty about the same and in some cases reportedly feel better after eating this has most to do with depression and low self esteem and they use food as a means to cope with this emotional issues this disorder serves to hide feelings of vulnerability that one may experience finally they become overweight and develop the risk of several other health problems exercise disorders the urge to constantly exercise or either lose weight or build a body that they perceive as puny even though they may be well built is what characterizes an excessive disorder compulsive exercise disorder this usually accompanies anorexia and bulimia where a person may compulsively exercise for several hours in a day in an attempt to lose weight and burn calories bigorexia this is the opposite of anorexia particularly only to men where a man or a boy may perceive himself as lean and puny in spite of having a good body build as such he will resort to prolonged hours at the gym and may even use steroids to develop the shape of the body he desires they may ignore all their family and social responsibilities in their endeavor to build a good muscular body which they are usually never satisfied with let's look at the causes some of the uh, reasons why men may develop eating disorders are some men as kids may have been overweight and constantly been teased about it which is why they may have developed a poor self image leading to the development of an eating disorder 
if men belong to a profession that requires them to be thin and good looking at all times such as acting modeling and providing any kind of entertainment then men may succumb to the pressure that results in an eating disorder even sportsmen are at a risk of developing this disorder because of the demands of a particular body shape they could require to be lean or have a muscular build it has been found that eating disorders such as anorexia and bulimia are more prevalent in athletes sometimes wrestlers who are asked to lose weight quickly to compete in a match that has a lower weight category are also at a risk adhering to the wrong diet pattern in an endeavor to improve body image often triggers eating disorders in men and boys a research has suggested that homosexual and bisexual men are at a higher risk of developing such disorder this is because of the pressure to look good and attract the attention they desire even the fear of openly admitting to homosexuality may cause stress triggering of these eating disorders men just like women also get affected by the idea of a projected body image by those in showbiz they sense the pressures just like women do and desire to look exactly like those models and ca- actors with their perfectly chiseled body in a desire to attain this body type they fall victim to eating disorders pooja lalwani says to be able to overcome these disorders the sufferer requires family support as mentioned above men themselves may not like to admit that they are suffering from such a problem as such one should watch out for signs of these disorders in men and help them overcome these problems this can be done by joining support groups and undergoing relevant therapy as this problem is mostly psychological ultimately it should be remembered that it is not physical appearance but good health that matters in the long run and one should only resort to norms of healthy weight loss combined with the right amount of exercise if they wish to enhance their appearance and overall health thank you nirmala for being with us on awr you are listening to adventist world radio the voice of hope for all to learn more you could write to us here's our mailing address adventist world radio post box number 17 pune 411001 maharashtra india You could also email us on amc3 at vsnl.com. And now before you hear God's word, here's a song by Esther Cynthia, I Found a Friend in Jesus. Is our fairest 
Time to hear God's word. Our topic for meditation is What if Jesus had said no? This will be presented by Dear Sharad. listener, ever wonder what your life would be like if you had made different choices? What if you had chosen a different career? What if you hadn't gone on that first date? What if you had moved to Paris or Bombay or London? What if you had made different friends? What if you had had more, fewer or no children? What if that job or investment you passed up, maybe you would be happier or wealthier or somehow better off if you had done something differently? What if? Frank Capra's classic film, It's a Wonderful Life, portrays one man asking the what-if question about his life and experiencing the answer. George Bailey is an all-American guy who longs for adventure. But whenever he is about to follow his dream, he is held back by a family or national crisis. Each time he gives up what he wants to do in order to do the right thing, George watches his brother and friends achieve the things that he is wanted and caves against his own mundane existence. Finally, feeling trapped by the responsibilities, George wishes that he is never been born. In answer to his wish, an angel comes to show George what life without him would have been like for his family and community. If George had never lived, he wouldn't have been around to save his little brother's life. So the boy would never have grown up to become a war hero. George wouldn't have been there to encourage the town floozy to do better. So she would have done worse. He wouldn't have wedded Mary and had a family so she could have ended up sadly alone. And if George hadn't been there to fight the greedy banker, Mr. Potter, their hometown would have lost its wholesomeness and many hard-working families would have lost their homes. George Bailey's life, it turns out, was crucial to the town of Bedford Falls. George Bailey is just a character in a story, dear listener. But he provides us with a pretty good analogy for understanding the most important life of all. Jesus Christ's life was crucial to our planet. However, at one time, he too questioned his life and what he was doing for others. He reached a distressing point where he wondered whether pain and struggle was worth it. And because of his choice, the world has never been the same. The setting for Jesus' greatest conflict was Jerusalem at the time of Passover. The holiday, the festival of freedom, invoked both celebration and mourning. God had freed his people at one time, but now they were under foreign rule again. Every Jewish woman, man and child prayed at Passover that God would save them once more. Dear listener, the disciples had arranged the Sedar, the Passover ritual meal commemorating the Exodus, as to light tossed out its first star. Jesus sat down to eat 
that last supper with his twelve disciples. At the center of the table was a roasted lamb sacrificed as a substitute for human death. Jesus appropriated the bread and the wine over which every Jewish holiday blessing is still said as symbol of his sacrifice and the forgiveness of sin. Threads of meaning were winding and weaving together. This Passover, there could be deliverance again, a deliverance even more central to human hopes and fears than release from slavery. In fact, the first Passover, glorious as it was, gave a mere forced taste of this new freedom that God was shaping. Dear listener, when Jesus and his disciples had finished the Sedar, they walked out of the city gates and climbed the mountain of olives to an area called Gethsemane, which was probably an orchard rather than our notion of a garden. There Jesus' sacrifice took place. No, he didn't die there, but he did make his decision to die as a ransom for humanity's sins. The crucifixion couldn't take Jesus' life. He had to surrender it. That choice took Jesus through the loneliest, most severe anguish anyone has ever experienced. In their most poignant scenes, the gospel describes Jesus as truly struggling on that fateful night. His struggle proved that humanity was not merely a disguise for his divinity. If it were, the decision to become the substitutionary sacrifice for our sins would not have been so crushing. You see, suffering and dying are common to human beings. The divine being would have faced these challenges unscathed and unshaken. But somehow, in this mysterious, glorious melange of humanity and divinity, that is Jesus Christ, the divine would only serve as the currency for forgiveness, while the human must bear the cost. Dear listener, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6 says, We are like sheep who have gone astray, and the Lord has laid him the iniquity of us all. What is the worst of all evils? It's not homicide or even genocide. No, it's decide, the murder of God's Son. Unimaginable as it may be, that is what occurred at a place called Calvary. Luke chapter 23, verse 33. Whom does God the Father hold responsible for what happened there? Surely, we indict the religious leaders who plotted the Savior's execution, Pilate, the spineless Roman governor, the callous soldiers who nailed Jesus to the cross, the fickle multitude who clamored for his blood. All these, to be sure, share the guilt. The great artist Ram Brand captured the truth of Scripture in one of his paintings. It depicts Christ on the cross with a mob surrounding him. In the shadows at the edge of that appalling scene stands a man. Who is it? Rembrandt himself. By including himself, the artist confessed that he too was responsible for the Savior's death. Dear listener, we have acknowledged that Jesus bore our guilt on the cross, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, because we all have sinned and the whole race of rebellious transgressors is responsible for the crucifixion as much as the soldiers who did the grassly execution. Dear listener, let us then take our place alongside Rembrandt. Only let's not stand there. Let's kneel in concrete gratitude. Here's a poet, Hess, who said, When Jesus Christ, my Savior, suffered loss, He gave Himself because He saw my need. It was my sin that nailed Him 
to the cross. I cannot blame another for the deed. Dear listener, the only people God forgives are those who confess their guilt. May God bless you as you keep listening to Adventist World Radio. Let's pray. Kind and merciful Father who art in heaven, we thank thee for wonderful life that you have given us to enjoy. We want to acknowledge the Jesus who came, lived and died in behalf of us, who took our place instead. May we come together to the throne of thy grace with thankful hearts for giving us eternal life by having faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless us now and forever. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. The Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 says, The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Yes, friend, when Jesus came to earth, something better was revealed. He himself became our high priest by sacrificing his life and shedding his blood to atone for our sins. Now when we accept his gift of forgiveness, we can rejoice that the penalty of our sins has been paid and our guilt removed. Salvation through Messiah Jesus is the only way we can be forgiven and have fellowship with God. Have you found this better way? With this, we have almost come to the end of our broadcast. To learn more on God's word and his better way of forgiveness and salvation, you are welcome to write to us. Here's our mailing address. Adventist World Radio, Post Box number 17, Pune 411001, Maharashtra, India. You could also email us on amc3 at vsnl.com. You could also contact us on our website awr.org slash English program. This is Maureen, your host. And I'm Sharad, signing out from Adventist World Radio. Thank you for staying with us. Do join us again. Until then, we wish you good health and a happy home. Goodbye. God bless you.